I am finally emerging from my coding cave after four months or so to talk about a project uh, I'm just so proud of and excited about. I have in my hand a single normal memory card, SD card from a wedding that I recently photographed. I have on my computer a Mac app that I've been personally developing completely on my own obsessively for about the past four months. And it contains an entirely new novel approach to culling photos for you in a Mac app. It does require an M-series chip. Intel's not supported yet and Windows is not supported yet. I'm working to develop both of those, but I'm literally doing this 100% solo. Now over 10,000 lines of code. This app is completely free right now for anybody on my Patreon. Uh, yeah, it's just included. And I'm gonna keep it that way for as long as I possibly can. The entire idea with this app is to either identify a folder if you already have images imported or uh, enable it to just auto detect any memory card when you insert it. Any raw files within the folder or subfolders or your memory card uh, will kick off a workflow that uses my own custom pipeline for culling uh, and make selections automatically for you in a few different ways. If you want, you can just leave it at that and look at those selections in Lightroom. You can also use this mode called select plus edit that will do that step and then automatically send those selections off for editing. Or if you want, you can just have images edited. So we'll, we'll go through each of these, but I just wanna show you some of the results, walk you through some of uh, how this whole app works and why it was worth so much of my time to develop. Uh, but yeah, before I dive into any of the details, I'm just gonna demo exactly how it's supposed to work. Uh, one cool thing is you can add a phone number, make sure to include your country code, and it will SMS message you updates uh, along the way, uh, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna choose the color green uh, for the selection results, but you can custom, you know, choose uh, flags or star ratings or whatever makes sense for your mind. Um, and then there's this uh, feature that I do not see existing anywhere else right now, and it works really, really, really well called Super Call, where you can identify the target number of photos you want it to select for. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but I'm gonna turn that off for now, just to, just to make the simple selection process uh, easy. So I'm starting the workflow and literally all it's gonna do now is, is constantly monitor in the background. When I insert my memory card, it's gonna kick everything off. Now one really cool feature in my workflow app is that you can have it copy everything to a secondary destination. Uh, if you're an auto detect memory card, you can have it be a primary and a secondary if you're trying to make you know backup copies. Um, but what's cool is if you make one of those destinations, one of the folders that Lightroom monitors for auto importing, in this case, I've just got a random folder on my desktop called Untitled Folder 2. Um, in Lightroom, you can just have it constantly monitor a dedicated folder for new raw files, they'll be imported and updated with metadata applied, whether that's just calling results or editing results or whatever else you want. So that when you come back, maybe an hour later, um, everything's already like rendered and imported into Lightroom when all you had to do was insert your memory card. So that is enabled right now. After I insert my memory card, it's gonna run through the call and then it's gonna auto import that into Lightroom. I'm only gonna show the select only calling pipeline right now. If you did select plus edit or edit only, it would work the same way. You would see uh, your edit results come right back into Lightroom automatically, uh, which is kind of kind of awesome, uh, especially at the like end of a really long wedding day. You might want to just go pop in your memory card, go to sleep, uh, and then wake up and everything's already pre-called and imported. That's exactly what this app does. So I'm going to start the workflow, insert memory card, boop, and watch everything kick off. Workflow started. Now, at the very, very beginning, uh, it's kind of cool. It's gonna use uh, something I just called smart camera analysis to literally, if, if you've got multiple camera bodies, whether it's from a memory card somehow or maybe a root folder of a bunch of different memory cards you've imported already, um, it's gonna identify each camera body by serial number and create a custom adapted shooting style 
for that body. Uh, because you might have several different photographers, uh, you know, giving you photos from events or weddings throughout the day. So one thing that allows for is it gives really useful feedback about your shooting habits, uh, preferred focal lengths, whether you use zoom or prime, average shutter speed, ISO. Um, yeah, if, if you have a more deliberate uh, sort of shooting speed, you know, like slower frames per second or a moderate or really fast frames per second, just stuff that might be interesting to see, like least used lens, most used lens, whatever. But it's taking all of this information to create a custom profile uh, for identifying clusters, which are just burst photos, photos that are really similar to one another, uh, so that then it can give you an analysis that you can read right here. Uh, people exiting a building, images blah, 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 are chosen for this reason, images blah, 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 are, cho are not chosen for this reason. It's taking those similar groups of photos, putting them together in one cluster, and then giving you an analysis, a reason why it's choosing or rejecting certain images. Now, when you import from a memory card, uh, you know, you're gonna have to wait for the entire workflow to finish before you start to see anything in Lightroom. But one really awesome thing about my app is if you've already got stuff imported, uh, you don't really have to wait. And I will show you that in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop this workflow because I don't wanna wait the entire time for this memory card to process. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into this folder, which I've already got imported. 2,500 images. It shouldn't take too long to process. I'm equaling, I'm equalizing everything, removing all labels, all edits so far. And I'm just gonna go back into my app and go to manual folder. So that's what you'd wanna do if you've already imported something. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna find this folder. It's 406. Great, I don't need it to copy to a secondary location because it's already been imported. Uh, okay, I'm gonna keep the label green. This time I'm gonna enable super call. And this is what happens, okay? So the entire first pass of the call where it's labeling everything green, uh, we'll get a look at that in a second. Uh, that is literally identifying the duplicate sets like we talked about earlier, and then choosing the best one or few, uh, if there's a whole lot of similar photos, it'll select the best ones from any group. It's gonna be a little bit more lenient about maybe artistic photos where something's slightly in motion or out of focus for a certain reason. Some images that technically might be a little confusing as to why it shows are going to be included simply so that you have at least one image from every idea that you photographed that day. But what's cool about Supercall, depending on how many target number of images you enter, it's gonna be much more selective and take liberties about what it's deciding to include. Now, this is very much optimized for wedding work, but you can still give a personal uh, prioritization or, or prompt about what you want it to emphasize. Uh, so if it's just couples portraits, you can include that. If it's a wedding client gallery that you're wanting the super call to select for, you can do that. Or you can literally type in anything you want. I'm gonna say marketing photos for wedding venue. Whatever you want, you can actually insert there and it will call uh, again on top of those initial selections, specifically curating for those best images given that guidance. Pretty awesome. And then if you want, you can have it uh, auto edit and send just those um, for, for editing automatically. Uh, for this though, it's a wedding. So I'm gonna say wedding client gallery, target number of images, I don't know, maybe 500. And I'm gonna leave the editing off for now. So, okay, I'm gonna start workflow. It's gonna do the same sort of uh, shooting style and technical assessment of all the um, camera bodies that are in that folder. And then you'll see the workflow kick off with descriptions of each cluster as it goes along. Cool thing is I'm getting text messages like on my phone to my watch when the workflow starts and when it completes. So if I wanna go off and do something else, uh, I can, but it does have a really accurate time estimate once the workflow finally kicks off with uh, processing the images. I'm gonna guess 2,500 photos probably only take about 15 minutes. I was pretty much dead on there. So it's estimating about 15.8 minutes, 16 minutes. It gets more accurate as it goes along. Um, but one thing to note, it does require an internet connection. Uh, this is processing being done in the cloud. I have a lot more control and a lot more ability to iterate and improve on the calling model um, with things being in the cloud right now. So I know that's a um, sticking point for a lot of people. They want to be able to do stuff locally. All these images are uh, completely protected. I don't have access to any of them. 
them, and they're completely purged and erased from everything uh, within 48 hours. So uh, you do not have to worry about your images being used for training uh, on anything at all, uh, and you don't have to worry about them just being out there in the ether of the internet. Uh, I have a lot of control over that, and I set it up to be exactly the way I would want my photos to be treated for you know an app that I was using uh, from someone else. So as this goes along, okay, since these are already imported into Lightroom, if that's how you first uh, test a set of photos through this, you're gonna wanna be in library mode right here, right? And you're gonna wanna get really used to selecting whatever images you wanna uh, look at. Right click, go to metadata, read metadata from files. So there's actually two different options here, okay? And I just wanna make this very, very clear. If you select images in library mode, go to metadata, if you read metadata from files, it's going to read what is in the folder of your raw files and then import that as the current setting in Lightroom. So if I hit read, it's gonna bring in those new labels that my app is creating for its selections. If I hit save, if that was the first thing I did, then whatever the current state is in Lightroom, which doesn't have any color or any selections at all, no edits, it's gonna overwrite what my app just did. So you're gonna to wanna to get used to that construct in your mind. And if you're running the app for the first time on a new set of images, hit read metadata from files. And now without having to open or close my Lightroom catalog, I can start to see the selections as my app is still running uh, in the background, which is kind of great. Uh, you can either start to make a manual pass over the calling as it goes along, or just take a peek to make sure it's selecting the way that you might want. And you can already start to see, like this is a very unique photo. Even if it wasn't very good, it would still choose it because it's just one idea and it doesn't want to skip over anything uh, you know, that's an idea. But anything else that's got similar groups of people, um, it's going to just try and select one, maybe two of the best from that duplicate selection. Uh, and as it keeps going, you're gonna have to keep selecting the images, uh, right click, metadata, read metadata from files to get those updated color or flag or, or star ratings as things go along. But hopefully just you know, with this zoomed out view here, you can start to get a sense of how it's making selections. Uh, when there's a you know, dozen or so photos of similar concepts, it's gonna select more, not just one from each. Uh, and same with group photos. It's gonna trend a little bit more lenient on what it's including, just so that you know you have a little more control. But it's looking at the obvious things like closed eyes, open eyes, um, but it can actually read and uh, analyze composition, expression being flattering or non-flattering, compositional aspects of if feet are cut off in a weird way. Uh, and it's, it's arranging all this in a way that I custom built and prioritized for my own preferences. Eventually, I will add the ability to just, you can dump a folder of a couple thousand wedding photos and have it train on your own sensibilities. But right now, it's got a pretty good baseline for not just wedding work, but everything uh, I've run through it in testing. Wrestling photos, just general event coverage, uh, family sessions, all of that, this base model, even though it's tuned for weddings and my sensibilities is, is really, really um, proving useful. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna keep just updating these as the model goes along, but there's only 10 minutes left. Uh, so I'll cut the video so that it's not super long, just waiting around. Uh, but at the very end, we'll take a look at the super call selections, talk through that a little bit, and then just talk through the editing side of things. As we're waiting, I do just wanna note that on my Patreon, if you are currently running this app and you happen to be the user that surpasses the millionth photo called through my app, I'm giving away a free lifetime access to this version of the app for life. I have a feeling we'll surpass that in the next day or two, uh, but we're within about 100,000 images of that threshold. And I'm hoping to do that every millionth photo threshold. We'll see how often that occurs. If you use the link in this post and download the app and try running it today, you might be the user that surpasses that millionth threshold. And I will give your email address free lifetime access to the app in its current form, uh, which is pretty darn good. So the super call is complete. I already have these imported. So again, I'm just gonna right click read metadata from files. And now I'm gonna see the color label that we initially had combined with the 500 super call selections that I chose the star rating of five uh, to choose for me. Obviously I can scroll through these and, and show you uh, examples of uh, its selections. You're probably gonna to wanna to test this on your own, but what I do wanna show is, okay, say I got the selections and now I wanna do 
uh, pink flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna try the super call run uh, with just pink flowers in the uh, like prompt priority and just say, I don't know, 20 images with pink flowers. I'm gonna choose just the star rating for of three for that. Uh, go ahead and hit reprocess super call. Star rating three, analyze, ah, 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 here we go. So it should, if it works, <laughs> uh, assign a star rating of three to 20 images uh, that are the best images across the entire collection uh, with the priority of pink flowers. Um, so yeah, let's see where that lands. Probably gonna take a minute. Boom, okay, done. Let's update the uh, metadata in Lightroom and see which uh, have three star ratings. And in theory, it should be anything that has a pink flower in it. And it's looking pretty good. Yeah, 20 images. Uh, so this is the only one, it kind of has some pink flowers back here in the background, but everything else, uh, pink flowers. And this is uh, the really cool thing about Supercall is that it looks at the entire collection first and then uh, makes a decision instead of like just doing it sequentially when it gets 20 photos, it just ignores the rest. It doesn't work that way, which is uh, pretty key. Okay, now one thing, I'm just getting kind of tired of recording this video and maybe I'll demo in another one, but it is an incredible feature, probably worth its own video. Uh, it's called Magic Edit. And when you do uh, select plus edit, when you're in that mode, where it goes through, labels all the selections, if Magic Edit is enabled, what this does is it sends off to your uh, Imagine account which you need to email support at imagine-ai.com uh, to get your API key, because um, all the editing ties into your Imagine account side. So you don't have to use Imagine for any of the calling, but for editing, that's the only platform that's supported right now. If you have Magic Edit enabled, what it will do is send off all of the AI selections for editing, download those edits, and then automatically copy and paste, replicate those Imagine edits to everything else in the similar group cluster. So you can get an entire folder or memory card or whatever of images edited with your custom profile while only having to send off the initial selections for each duplicate group. That's what Magic Edit is. I will demo it in another video. I just wanted to explain it for this one. And yeah, pretty proud of that one. It works really well. Some other bells and whistles just um, on the editing and Imagine side. Uh, you can have it auto adjust to be actually a smaller file size that gets sent to Imagine. So uh, if you're on hotel Wi-Fi and you don't really know uh, how much bandwidth you might have, ooh, the sun's really coming out. Um, you can have it auto adjust the size that's sent to Imagine for editing uh, based on that. Or you can put in a custom amount or just set a, a preset size here. So that's something uh, that's I think really useful aside from just the magic edit mode. And yeah, if you're in edit only, it simply just looks at your entire folder of images or if you've uh, gone through and manually made some adjustments, uh, you can have it uh, only edit, you know, whatever um, combination of labels that you have set up. So that's it for now. I am very tired of recording this video, but I hope it all made sense. I'm just super excited and, and, and so happy to see so many people uh, getting great results for an app that uh, if you have been a patron of mine or become a new one, is totally free. Uh, I mean, obviously you need to pay to be on my Patreon, but if you've always been there, you're not paying anything else for this. And if you're new, for as long as I'm able to keep it, it's gonna be free. So feel free to uh, you know ask any questions in the comments. Obviously, if you're a coder or into this kind of stuff, I would love those kinds of questions and feedback if you use this. So as always, thank you so much for your attention and I'll be back soon. Bye everyone.